In today's video, we are going to understand how clouds are formed. And we're going to do this by looking at a very interesting and simple experiment that you can try out at home. Now for this, we need two glasses, hot water and ice cubes. Now firstly, we need to boil some water and fill two thirds of our first cup with this hot water. Be careful while doing this and take a help of an adult if needed. Next up, we need to flip the second cup upside down and place it on top of the first cup. And then balance an ice cube carefully at the base of the flipped cup. Now, as we leave it for some time, we'll start to notice small tiny water droplets that start to accumulate on the upper cup. And eventually, these tiny droplets will start to join together eventually forming bigger droplets that trickle down at the base of the cup. Now, interestingly, this is a very similar manner in which clouds are formed high up in the sky. The droplets that we see inside the cup represent exactly how clouds are formed. But why does this happen? Well, for this, we need to recall a very important process, that is evaporation. Now we know that evaporation is the process by which water droplets are converted to water vapour. So on warm, sunny days, the sun heats up the rivers, the ponds, the oceans, turning water into invisible water vapour. And this is what we understand as evaporation. Now because water vapour is lighter than air, it rises up into the sky. Now, this water vapour keeps reaching higher up in the atmosphere. And once it reaches higher layers of the atmosphere, the air here is much cooler when compared to the surface. So, when warm water vapour reaches the cooler areas, it cools down to forming water droplets by the process of condensation. So, we know that condensation is the process of conversion of water vapour into water droplets. And this is very similar to what we observed in our experiment. But there's a little bit more to it. Because when water vapour condenses, it requires some tiny particles like dust or it could be pollen to which they cling on to, forming tiny droplets around these particles. Therefore, these small droplets cluster together and eventually they create clouds. So as more and more droplets gather together, a cloud grows bigger and they grow denser. So eventually clouds are formed when droplets of water gather together. Now, eventually as more and more droplets keep getting added and they merge together, the clouds become darker and heavier, eventually forming rain clouds. So therefore, if we were to quickly summarize what we just learned, we know that heat from the sun causes water from the oceans and, you know, lakes, rivers, all to turn into water vapor. And this water vapor rises higher into the atmosphere where the temperature becomes cooler. And water vapour cools down by the process of condensation around tiny particles like dust or pollen, forming tiny water droplets. And eventually these droplets cluster together, forming clouds. But when we talk about clouds, they come in different shapes and different sizes. Now, I love taking pictures of clouds. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures that I have taken and tell you about all the different types of clouds and their shapes. Now, the clouds that you see in this photo are said to be cirrus clouds, which are thin and wispy and they look feather-like. They often signal that there's a change in weather, sometimes proceeding to a storm in a day or two. While sometimes, often, clouds tend to look fluffy, almost like a cauliflower. Now, what you see on your screen is a cumulonimbus cloud, which are large towering and dense cloud which looks like a cauliflower. This is actually an indication that a thunderstorm might be coming soon. But most often when we draw clouds, we tend to draw it something like this. Now these clouds that you see are cumulus clouds, which are fluffy, white and cotton-like with a flat base. 
Now, usually we see that they tend to represent fair weather. But if they become bigger and bigger, they have a potential to become a cumulonimbus cloud. So remember, the thicker and darker the cloud, the more number of water droplets it contains. And next time you look up in the sky, you will actually be able to recognize the different types of cloud shapes. So thank you for watching this video and happy cloud gazing.